Got it. <laughs> okay. Fuck Zoom. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Oscar Central. I am here with Jacob. How are you? Hello. Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, it's Mother's Day. It's my first Mother's Day as Aww. a Happy mother. Mother's Day. Oh, happy Mother's I, Day. Thanks, guys. I did something really fun today that we'll talk about later. Um, we're also here with Nicole. How are you? I I keep people ask me that and I'm like, I'm great. And then I'm like, I mean, other than the fact that I have COVID, COVID. (laughs) but otherwise I'm great. (laughs) Like great with an asterisk. Like I can't leave my house. I can't go anywhere. (laughs) Um, How are you, Dan? We're also with Dan. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. We're so excited. Happy to not have COVID. (laughs) Very happy to not have COVID. Yes. (laughs) Amazing. So I don't know about y'all, but my big Mother's Day plan was to watch the Crimes of the Future trailer on my TV (laughs) because I had not done that yet. Incredible. I am so excited. I think Mm -hmm. it- um, A whole viewing party. It's, I made Daisy watch it. It's fine. Um, (laughs) We're all yelling if yeah, but Doctor don't say, Strange should yeah. be rated R, but like <laughs> my seven month old is watching a David Cronenberg trailer. Um, yeah, but it made me really excited for Can to start. And I know Jacob has a trailer. He was excited that little teaser that dropped that oh, he was this excited the- for Can. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. The more that I'm hearing about that, I don't I don't know because there's not like an official synopsis but i heard that he has to like bare knuckle box a werewolf at some point um and i'm just ready for it i i'm ready for something to match the level of insanity that old boy was and i think uh, i'm so excited for this one the trailer got me so much more excited and they didn't do anything in it I am obsessed with teasers and trailers that don't show you anything about the plot. Like Crimes of the Future was essentially the same. Like they put out a synopsis. Oh, so you'd love the Avatar trailer. Know. That's what I was just <laughs> thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the plot, the plot could be in it. I'd have no idea. Like no idea. Because <laughs> I I assume you need to have seen the first, but we were Maybe talking. Maybe not from what I've heard. I don't oh, know. really? I don't know. Is Kate Winslet a whale? Is that is that a thing? Am I shocking? Who everyone? told you that? If everyone's Maybe. listening, everyone's face was like, um. <laughs> "We uh, uh, officially we don't know what her role is." I think. I just would have a bad gut feeling about that, um, given the nickname that James Cameron had for her on set of Titanic. Um, I'm not going to repeat it, but if anybody knows what I'm talking, nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm like, no. text me. <laughs> Um, I'll just say it. I mean, it's off. It, it's Oscars related because it's Titanic. He called her Kate weighs a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So if like has that. his address and can get it to me, I will go to his house. I will take this up. Yeah. Okay. Well, his house is down in the Marianas Trench, so I don't know if they're going to be able to get down there. You doubt me. <laughs> Uh, jo- Josie's here. Josie. I, oh my god, Josie, I love the shirt. Yay. Wait, let us see. Oh my god. Oh, Josie sta- comes in with a bang. Yes. In this house, we stand in Hades Town. I Josie, if you it. told That's me the- we could have matched. <laughs> Amazing. Um, how are you, Josie? I'm good. How are you guys? Thanks for letting me crash. My Zoom was being mean. <laughs> Wait, everyone is saying their Zoom is being mean. And I'm like, I hope this is recording. Like, I it. hope it's recording. <laughs> Is downloading an update out of nowhere and I was like okay and then I clicked on it and I was like no mine didn't do an update too <laughs> wait mine mine updated last week yeah. and then I was trying to like do something and I just had to sign out and like create a new user and then it just I so wouldn't cool. open and I was like yeah oh. it's so annoying um zoom yeah. is stupid zoom sorry to zoom that we're currently using but you are dumb <laughs> Um, yeah, so we can just get right into it because I feel like we all have so much we are going to talk about. So this week we are doing another Missed Oscarunities episode all about original screenplays. So we're going to do two rounds where everybody makes two choices. The first round will be original screenplays. 
that did not win an Oscar but were nominated. The second round will be original screenplays that did not even get a nomination. So I did, I have to delete someone. I did a, that is so funny. So the order we're gonna go in first round is going to be Dan, me, Nicole, Josie, and then Jacob. Okay. Well, no going less. first is a lot of pressure. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but okay, okay, fine. Let's start. We're going with, we're starting with the movies that were nominated but didn't win. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So this is. Um, I hate you. This is really hard. Um, I, 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 had like, a, I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> I, I had a lot of movies that met this criteria. A lot of my favorite movies were nominated in this category and didn't win, but I wouldn't necessarily want to like rectify that on behalf of their screenplays. Mm. Um, like, for example, love Monsieur Hulot's Holiday with all my heart and if you haven't seen it please do it is the height of like the silent but not silent comedy it's so great but again screenplay nah um however one of the funniest films ever made was nominated in this category and somehow did not win and that is an absolute crime Ooh, I wonder so I where he's going <laughs> so uh, my first pick is A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, okay. Ooh, I, okay, nice. you could have gone any direction with that, but I was like, yep. this is the one time I picked comedy, so please. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> I got so worried. <laughs> I, a Fish Called Wanda is this to me, it's so freaking funny. Every line in it is hilarious. And I, of course, performed to perfection. But I, I almost went with another one of my favorites, uh, Tootsie, but I went for that last Wait, time. Wait, I wanted Dustin to Hoffman send you, actor, but. I wanted to send you this interview I saw of Alexander Skarsgård talking about Tootsie. Really? He literally was said that's, that's his random. favorite. Yeah, he said it's his favorite performance of all time. And I was like, what? Like of all time? But he would not Amazing. stop talking about it. So if you would have picked it, he would have been like calling you and leaving <laughs> for you. Like, he would have been like, Dan. <laughs> I would have been Tootsie. like, Alex, this is my address. Please come to my house on Friday when I am free. I'd like to get together on Friday. When I'm free. You wouldn't cancel plans for <laughs> Alexander Skarsgård? I would absolutely cancel plans if I had to, but however. Uh, okay. But yeah, I it's love just called that. Wanda. That's yeah. good. That's a great pick. Okay, I am next. And okay, I have so many comedies written down, which is so unlike me. If you know me, I like like three comedy movies. Comedies um, like they get nominated here and don't win all yeah, the time. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. like, I understand they're like, we're recognizing you, but I'm like, just give every five years, just award one. Like, just keep us on our toes. Please. Like, acknowledge them. Um, so I'm going to go with something very recent um but i think it's one of my favorite screenplays of recent history a comedy the favorite <laughs> i just am obsessed with this movie i love it you can read it and laugh you can watch it and the delivery obviously sends it over the top but i'm so impressed when i read like a comedy screenplay and you can just crack up by yourself so loved my little Yorgos, um, just a great screenplay. And you know, when you think about it losing, you're like, oh, it probably lost to some serious biopic or like some serious <laughs> thing. And then you I mean, what it lost kind to. Of. No, no. <laughs> when you realize what it lost to, you're mortified. <laughs> All right, Nicole is up. And I wonder if she's gonna keep the comedy thing going. Yeah. I'm actually going to keep the comedy thing going because I was realizing in picking things for this that almost everything that I have on my list, uh, at least on like this side on the nominee but didn't win, is actually a comedy. And I'm also going to go with something very recent. I think it is one of the best written comedies of all time. So clever in everything from like the actual lines to the structure of it. And I'm going to go with Knives Out. <gasps> Ooh. Not Ooh. the one I thought you were. That's yeah. not. 
A no one just Knives Out is thought, one of my yeah. favorite movies. So I mean, it, as it should be for everyone. <laughs> precisely. <laughs> precisely. Like... I'm trying to figure out when to time rewatching it because I don't want to watch it too soon but i'm also terrified whenever netflix decides to tell us the name of the movie and drop the trailer that i'm going to watch it immediately mm-hmm. but that movie is so good it's so quotable it's so, and like it's so I, rewatchable it's like, so rewatchable the, and movies with twists like and whodunits or whatever i feel like they lose their rewatchability exactly but knives out i don't know if it's like a combination of just ryan johnson and like the performances i don't know what it is but i i the donut bit i laugh so oh good. my like, god so good. every time my like, dad the first time that all the time <laughs> like, I, I rem- my that's entire a really family good, quotes that's it a really good point about night out is that i feel like every age group really likes yep. it and mm-hmm. like has some sort of connection to it being hilarious to them which normally with comedies like my parents yep. don't they don't think the favorite is funny like they don't think that movie is funny. my mother hated it <laughs> like actively my parents were like why did we watch nicole this? don't lie you weren't a big fan either i mean i also hate the favorite but... <laughs> but i just i feel like nice out is like the opposite like everybody likes it i don't know I think okay it's so recently quick tangent recently um my mom was telling me that she was leaving the house and my sister was like in the living room and she was like all right i'm gonna run to the grocery store and she realized that she forgot her list so she comes back in like 90 seconds later and my sister apparently from the living room just goes ransom you're back already and my mom was like <laughs> like when i tell you my family quotes this movie continually that's so amazing. Amazing. i went it'd be really funny if they that. all picked they all picked like a character to only quote oh my you god know? yeah. like they were all we specifically to, i feel like role. we could all get assigned a character probably That'd be that really would be funny. amazing. I've been told my typecast is Meg Thromby, so <laughs> I can accept that. <laughs> so funny. Okay, I wonder if Josie is now continuing the comedy because she's yeah. next. Okay, amazing. <laughs> so thank God I picked three because <laughs> I also had a favorite. <laughs> amazing. I just remember watching this that movie for the first time and being like, this is a great screenplay. It's so good. So upsetting. But um, the one I'm going with, I actually own the screenplay. Um, I read it each time I'm going to sit down to write a screenplay because I'm like, yes, give me your wisdom. <laughs> that is uh, coincidentally celebrating Mother's Day, um, Lady Bird. That's so funny. That was my on my list too. <laughs> Yay. I love Lady Bird. Oh, oh, it's so good. It's such a clean script. Mm-hmm. Like each time I reread it, like if there are two scripts that I always reread when I'm gonna when I want inspiration for writing, it's Lady Bird and The Farewell. Such mm. great scripts. Lady Bird is um devastating. The last movie I watched before I gave birth. Um I love I love Lady Bird. It's so special. Mm-hmm. It's so special. Talk about someone like knowing your soul. Like, yeah, ma'am, back off, back off. <laughs> oh, oh my she god! I didn't have to do this like that. But she really she didn't. Did. She it's really also didn't. very quotable. Like, I'm it's not so gonna lie. Quotable. The amount of times a day I say it's the titular role, literally. Yes. <laughs> that, <is concerning>. <laughs> that and the weirdest line that I quote that literally has no reason for me to quote it, just saying is who's on top for the first time. <laughs> I what? say don't be a Republican a lot all the time. Lately, all the time. Especially <laughs> this last two weeks. Like, yep. Nonstop. Um, no pressure, Jacob, just following up like every single person's favorite screenplay in the last 10 years. <laughs> no pressure. Well, I, I think- won't go the last 10 years um but i will go in the 90s and i'm gonna go the truman show i should know yes yep Yep. it keeps the comedy thing going if lady birds counted i think this is the truman show is so depressing what are you talking about that is true but i don't know it's one of my i think it's so is lady bird (laughs) so is lady bird but lady bird is like it's different it hits different Lady Bird does it different. And the thing is, is that I can't get mad that it lost because it lost to get out. Wait, can we talk about like... both, time, both times that Greta Gerwig has lost? I've been like, you know what? I understand though. And I like the yeah, winner. Same. Like, I don't even like Jojo Rabbit, but I'm like, one, that was an amazing adapt, like amazing adaptation. 
And yep. it's Taika. I'm not going to be like, Ugh! like exactly. And it's so sad. Time. I just hope that um, Barbie's ori- is Barbie considered adapted because it's like of a toy. Oh, I, I mean, no, I think it would be. It has to be I a pre existing character. Yeah, I think it's original. Yeah, I think it would be original. What well, all I know the is the Lego that movie. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good. Because that would be the precedent. Whoever is her biggest competitor best not be someone that is cool <laughs> and well liked, also. <laughs> If this is the year, they're like, you know what? We should just give it to Christopher Nolan. I will. Watch it be for like Cooper Rafe's next movie. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. And I'll be there with him. Whether you watch it or not. The battle of the internet, darling. What I'm hearing is that you're not the biggest Barbie fan. Yeah. What I'm hearing is you just gave me the title of biggest Barbie fan. So thank no, you I never said I was the biggest Barbie fan. Record. I said I was the longest Barbie. No, you fan. said you were the biggest Barbie fan. I've been so. there since since day one. Did you I have, have a Barbie? Did you have the Barbie dream house? Did you have the Barbie dream house with the elevator? <laughs> because if you didn't, <laughs> no, <laughs> right? There was a Barbie dream house with an elevator. An elevator. Yeah. Okay, first yeah. off, I had the I, hotel. Okay, the wait, wait, wait. House. Before we do this, I had the airplane. The what? Lego movie, the Lego movie won the NBR best original screenplay. So okay, so okay. Barbie's so gonna be original. original. Right. Kind of like I remember with King Richards, and I mean, like, kind of similar, or not, but you know, it's like someone's mm-hmm. life, someone's entire yeah. story. Like it's also, a- wait, I can't take away from uh, Greta and Noah both getting their first win. So yeah. Them getting their win together. Together. Yeah. Imagine. Would be nice. Imagine. I would and love to see my parents Barbie. get a win together. Right? <laughs> I hope she had a nice Mother's Day. What do you think? Hey, he Mother's Day, her? Greta. What do you think he did for her? Because it better be fil- something good. They're filming, right? It must so, like, have been. They're in Boston, right? What do you think they did? If you're listening and you're from Boston, um, tell I, us did, did he get her a cannoli? Went to Dunkin Donuts. Someone <laughs> let me know if he got her a cannoli. That's what I hope for. Yeah. They text. They texted Ben Affleck. Where should we go? <laughs> <laughs> she brought. He brought a. He brought like the heart donuts. Oh my god. Why do <laughs> I feel like? Why do I feel like Adam Driver probably got her a card? <laughs> like, probably. Probably. It probably That's was. So cute. That's amazing. Okay, Dan, but you're get- next. Well, to give Jacob's pick a little more time, like the Truman Show is one of the greatest screenplays ever written. Like, can we there acknowledge we that fact? It is. It's good. Yes. Wait, no. And I think it's the so... background. God. Is it Portrait of a Lady on Fire? It is. Yes. I would recognize those cliffs anywhere. <laughs> Which would also be a a good um, pick for the next part of this. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, preview. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. So you know me, I kind of like to keep my picks between one more classic and one more new. And I had a really hard time picking a new one. I almost did a 90s thing like Jacob and went with The Sixth Sense because that is a banger of a screenplay. And then I was um, forced to choose between two rather recent ones that I love and that are each perfect in their own way. Um, So very 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 sorry to a scar for hardy and a separation which is a perfect screenplay jacob that is freaking me the fuck out <laughs> oh i don't God. know why like i am a green screen <laughs> i can't do green screen on my computer it just puts it just makes me the part of it oh lord um so apologies to a scar for hardy because the separation is perfect but i have to go with the lobster <gasps> yes Ooh. because talk about an original concept and amazing execution the dialogue is incredible the story is incredible and like your ghost pure and unfiltered but yet still accessible somehow i as a single person i have a very special place in my heart for that movie i i love that movie. so good it's so good. I so I always feel like that's his most accessible movie, and I'm assuming mm-hmm. I can say that sight unseen of his new movie because it does not sound accessible. <laughs> no. um, but I mean, give or take the favorite, but he didn't write the favorite. Yeah. So. But like I, it's so good. It's so bizarre, but it's so like 
hauntingly like, oh yeah. my God, is this going to happen to me? Like, is this my life? Like, I, I love that movie. Yeah. I love and that the end day. is just like, it, uh, the end is so perfect that is for so perfect. that story. I, I love it. I love it a lot. And um, Colin Farrell. Like, I don't know what we have to do to just get him an Oscar nomination. Um, but well, please. he has the chance this year for um, the Martin. It's Madonna gonna give movie. me. It's gonna give me deja vu to one of my all-time favorites, and I just I'm not ready to like watch it happen again. Okay, I haven't picked. That's why I'm kind of stalling, guys. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, oh. I can go on about the lobster for some more if you need me to. Actually, I, I've decided. Okay. Okay. This is this is fine. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. I have so many for this because all of my favorite original screenplays lose. So there's too many. There's too many. Um, so one of my favorite movies of all time, and I just rewatched it recently, and I just... I think we talked about this move, the movie that beat it last week, Dead Poets Society. Um, but do the right thing. Just like, oh, yeah. it's so perfect as a film. And the screenplay is so just intense, but oh, I love it so much. I love Spike Lee. I know he has an Oscar, but it would have been amazing had it been for something of this stature. Um, I just I love do the right thing so much. So that's my that's my pick. But what a year. Um minus one of the nominees that we will not name, but it was Spike Lee, Steven Soderbergh, and Nora Ephron that all lost. It's a tough year. And they all lost. Insane. Insane. Nicole, you are up next. Hey, well, speaking of Nora Ephron. Oh, yes. I think, first of all, Dan would think I was like an imposter if I didn't yeah. pick this. Yeah. Right other I was literally after her first pick, I texted he her. I'm like, you're a second me, pick. Like, are you not picking right? this? <laughs> Obviously, I have to go with When Harry Met Sally. I think it's one of the greatest screenplays of all time. I think it is the greatest rom-com of all time. I, again, talk about a movie that's insanely quotable. And that is, I think, appealing, you know, to all ages, is funny to people of all ages, has stood the test of time. Incredible. I love that screenplay so much. I also like have it in book form, uh, like the screen. Oh, that's amazing. It. it reads so well, even on the page. Oh, I bet. I'm literally obsessed with it. And the fact that like Nora Ephron did not win for it even though like it, it just pains me I wish it had been like a different year yeah. I it's also like the definitive Nora Ephron movie that you're like if yep. it couldn't happen it, with this exactly movie, like what but I love this movie so much because rom-coms age really poorly because of like technology updates and whatnot and then they kind of makes them like unwatchable but like when Harry and Sally is like the complete opposite like I, I also feel like yeah people a lot are watching of it forever from, a lot of rom-coms from that era also have not fared well in terms of the Sexism. way that the gender politics in them have aged <laughs> yeah. like you try to watch something like pretty woman nowadays to, like mm -hmm. with a new audience and I think it feels very dated Whereas mm -hmm. I think even, you know, whenever I talk to younger people who watch When Harry Met Sally for the first time, like in this decade, it still holds up. And I think that's awesome. It's so important. And that's just like the power of Nora Ephron. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's something to be said for those types of movies that are written by women getting at something more universally true. Yep. Yes. All right, Josie, no pressure. You don't have to stick with 1989. Like, I know that Nicole and I are kind of like, like, but you don't have oh, to. Yeah. I went with more recent films, mostly because I didn't start getting into the Oscars until recently. So. Jacob and I, I were talking about that off air, that I was like 90% of my list from the last 10 years. No, yeah. Like, I, I remember I started getting into the Oscars, like, fairly recently, so um, I'm not going to fool myself. Um, I went with something from this past Oscars. Ooh. And Ooh. I'm going to keep going with the Ramaz theme, and I chose the worst person in the world. 
Yes! (laughs) Yes! Wait, can we talk about her two choices being like some of the best screenplays of all time? Seriously. (laughs) No, but like the worst person in the world, I mean, it just breathes off the page. Like I feel if you read it, it's like it says hello to you because it's so alive. (laughs) And just the writing and the character work, the dialogue, it just just also the way that Renata just talked about them. Like they're very into philosophy and like you can tell in the writing, just the way people interact, the gender politics and everything. And I like, I feel like this is one that will age well. I have seen when they're all high. (laughs) Okay, that scene, I was like, this is obviously hilarious, but I was like, this is so like real. And just like, I don't know, they, she, that screenplay did such a good job of making you feel like you were friends with everyone, but you also mm-hmm. like weren't judging them like your friend, you know? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's a, that screenplay is so, like, I'm so happy it got nominated, but I'm also just like absolutely devastated. I couldn't pull off a win. I'm sorry, Nicole. I'm really sorry, Nicole. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, no pressure, yeah. Jacob. I don't know how you follow that up. <laughs> how I follow that one. Um, I wanted to go older. I guess since I'm the last one, I will get my like honorable mentions out. Um, oh, I have one. Don't let me forget. <laughs> I love um, American Graffiti was one I was thinking of. I love um, that movie. Um, what was the other one? Back to the Future. I was thinking yes! of that Lars the and the Real Girl, I think was just that's one of those like really cool nominations um, yes. just with the, what it is um e tu mama tambien i love that one yeah. but i am gonna go with magnolia kenzie and i were talking about it the other day i, I re-watched it last night it took me like seven hours to watch it because my baby <laughs> wouldn't let me watch it but i rewatched it <laughs> i i think it's might be his best script i think it's what he should have won for and i don't know i really enjoy it i love it literally from the beginning of it i remember telling one of my friends like trying to talk them into watching it and they were so against watching a three-hour movie and they watched the first like 10 minutes and they were like yeah i'm in um (laughs) it's one of my all-time favorites and yeah that's the one i ended up going with i really really like that movie until the damn frogs really i it, it's just like i get to the every time and i've watched it only a few times because i really do love it and i am it's hypnotic and i'm so into it and then the damn frogs come and i'm just like the bitch wrote himself into a corner, couldn't figure out a way out of it, went back in, added the prologue, <laughs> and did this to justify it. Like, I, I can't, I can't shake that feeling. I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone who loves it. If it's a good movie, it's just so close to being perfect. I can't. Jacob's devastated for anyone listening. He's like, I don't know. Sorry. My, my I'm like, husband, I have like seven good ones. <laughs> my husband really hated it until like the third time he watched it. And then he, because that was actually like my husband's like, who is very like not on Twitter and stuff. Um, he was very unaware of this movie until me. Um, but he felt the Doing same the way. Doing the good work, Kenzie. I, I try. Um, he he felt the same way. He felt like it was like his way out of not knowing where to go, but he kept watching it over and over. Because and I was like, you secretly like it, but now he loves it. It's his second favorite PTA movie, but he has not seen two other ones. No, three. Yeah, he his favorite is um my least favorite, my second least favorite. Third least oh, which favorite. One, which one is it? Boogie Nights. I don't like oh. Boogie Nights. <gasps> I love the performance. Okay, listen. Uh. There are two people. Two Boogie people. Nights is his best. Phantom Thread is right there. Um, there are two people that are just my absolute, the worst people in the world to me. Okay, Matt fair. Damon. Matt Damon. 
and Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Surprisingly, mm-hmm. surprisingly, Nicole, <laughs> Nicole <Chase. laughs> Surprisingly, The Departed is one of my favorite movies of all time. I I don't know. I think there's something about like one of them killing the other one. I like I don't know. <laughs> but um it's just like really hard for me to watch the movie and then just like the porn there's some stuff that has not aged like great. Not that like any PTA movies really have like insanely redeeming qualities, but like that one just like I don't know, but it's just, I love Magnolia. Magnolia is my second favorite, Phantom Thread, because I'm a threadhead till I die. And then Magnolia. (laughs) (laughs) But Magnolia is definitely where I would give him his win, right? Like if I was giving him a screenplay win, I think that's where I would give it. It would not be licorice pizza. (laughs) Anyway, so now we're all set with our, I think the, more Do we want to give some honorable mentions? Yes, really yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm going to start. I have yes. a couple that I wanted to give that I totally forgot to give out. One, 20th Century Women. Yes. Incredible. We love it. Um, also, I have two from 2019. There were two that I really loved that year. Uh, 1917, which I think the way that that's structured for a war film is so interesting. It's also one of the only major war films ever written by a woman because it is co-written by a woman, which I think is very fun. And I think that's part of why there is so much humanity in it. I also think it's an incredibly anti-war war movie, which I mm-hmm. love to see, mm-hmm. but in a very subtle way that never feels preachy. And I think that's very hard to achieve. And it's one of those screenplays that you almost like don't notice when you're watching it, which I actually think is a mark of how good it is. My other one from that year, obviously, is Marriage Story. I freaking love Marriage Story. Uh, it's it, it's well documented, my love for Marriage Story, even on this podcast. Uh, my other one that I wanted to shout out is a really early one, but I watched it for the first time not that long ago, and I love The Great Dictator so much. Like, mm-hmm. that is yes. how you do it. That is yes. how you do it. That's a good that one. It's one of the one. only times in the 40s, too, that I feel like the rightful thing did not win. So... Yeah, um, I, it, I I love literally every single one you mentioned. So I got it. There's so many classics that didn't win this category. Um, La Strada, The Four Hundred Blows, North by Northwest, Hiroshima, more and more, eight and a win? half, mm-hmm. eight and a half. I mean, come on. Um, and I I hate him. But Purple Rose of Cairo is really, really freaking funny. It's really funny. It's really funny. And also, ha- Memento. How did Memento not win this? What beat Memento? Um, that was 99 or 2000, I think. Uh, um, a Gosford Park. Yeah, which, like, I kind of can't be mad because... I do love Gosford Park, but like, it's a memento. Like, God, it's so brilliant. Okay. So, my first one is a straight up comedy, Bridesmaids. I. Mm-hmm. That's I, where I thought everyone was going to go when they kept saying comedy. I just, I know the performances are what like really elevate that movie, but like, that movie is so quotable and just like felt so real and it's that that scene at the very beginning with um Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig at the coffee shop like after she's with John Hamm and they're just talking is just like straight up a conversation and like it's actually in the screenplay and that's just so crazy to me my next one is um the conversation I love that screenplay I love that movie it's my favorite Francis Ford Coppola movie yes Um, yes it's it's just a masterpiece i love it and then listen i'm not a rom-com gal it's not my thing it's not my thing but my big fat greek wedding was just like yeah yeah i was gonna say that one too so fucking quotable oh my god and it's like i'm not greek but i was like hell yeah i was like like, okay when that movie came out everyone was suddenly greek let me tell you and i don't know i love the story of that movie getting made and everything about it but like that screenplay is so good and what a cool oscar nominee look wait there it is Mm -hmm. i just it's 
it's days, but yeah it's definitely recommend this book it's uh, it's just so good and then um i had one more but i don't remember oh we were talking about it because it's giving me ptsd what's gonna happen this year in bruges is so funny and like a delightful screenplay just devastating it didn't win so that's my that's my oh and nightcrawler great screenplay Mm -hmm. really great yeah oh and another men ex machina Mm, yeah terrifying terrifying i had to read it to clarify things because i was so confused after (laughs) <laughs> but yeah Josie do you have any most Wes Anderson yes just anything Wes Anderson has done yeah really <laughs> um, I mean should have won for Moonrise Kingdom yeah yes. or at least Grand Budapest Hotel since that was like his magnum opus at the time mm-hmm. yeah like everything why didn't you give it original screenplay you clearly liked the film um my Big Fat Greek Wedding, and most Pixar, especially Ratatouille. Ratatouille. I was going to say especially Wally, but sure. <laughs> I love Ratatouille so much. I haven't seen it. Will I ever be able to what? see that from Rakakuni in my head? Yeah. <laughs> I have Probably seen Rakakuni. <laughs> oh as someone who does not like most Pixar movies, Ratatouille is worth a watch, Kenzie. So my thing is at this point in time, I'm like, do I just wait for my daughter to be old enough to want to watch them? No, no. I watch them. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe, now which should... ones you're willing yeah. to have on repeat? Yes, so, you know. yes, yes. Well, I understand the music. The score will be there. That's true. As they grow just... older, they'll understand more things. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know. I I literally only watched Wally a year ago, so I'm like way behind with Pixar movies. Like way behind. Oh, and then none of us said it, but Sound of Metal. Just pour one out. Right. Um, yeah. So, oh, I love that screenplay. So good. So now is my favorite part because there's more to talk about. We're going to each pick two that did not receive an Oscar nomination for original screenplay. So the order we're going to go in is Josie, Nicole, Jacob, Dan, and then me. So Josie, you're first. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i do have three again just in case um obvious one is behind me but <laughs> i might leave that for letter for later as an honorable mention um oh because i really want to talk about this one or maybe okay. th- that'll be my second one who knows i'll keep you on your toes um yes. come on come on yes oh, i was yes. really hoping you were gonna say it so i didn't have to <laughs> yeah I, I was hoping someone would say it yeah uh, is there anything to say? There's nothing to say other than, than, no. the, other than everyone nice. bursting into tears. There's yeah. nothing to say. There's nothing to say. I like, literally it, just seeing the interviews written into the script just made me happy. Yeah. It's like, yes, this was intentional. Like everything has a purpose in this film. And it's just. Yeah. <laughs> that was my biggest thing was waiting until after the credits and seeing that like all the interviews were like real people and then mm-hmm. I, it made me like like i was sobbing and then i was okay and like and watching the credits and then i see more. that and i'm like i'm like How, are they okay is someone hugging them i so i hate notoriously hate movies with children like i i just hate them and i i know i know that's so no, mean that's, that's so good. mean i i i was not particularly the nicest person to the child actor in Wonder Woman 1984. (laughs) A good child actor actor is hard to find. Yeah, and I I was like, I'm not going to like this. And I literally watched it twice within 24 hours of renting it. I was obsessed with this movie. And I did the same thing because I rented it on iTunes. So like I was crying through the credits and then I was like, okay, I'm fine. And then I started... (laughs) Oh, what a beautiful screenplay. It's so good. What does he have to do to get an Oscar? Like he can't know. even get nominated. What is this? Uh, we've mentioned we've mentioned too. Same with your yeah. We've mentioned too. So clearly they're doing something right. We just gotta bribe mm-hmm. someone for them, I guess. <laughs> gotta figure out something. Whatever Between Peter all Park, of us, we can get like a hundred dollars. Yeah. 
<laughs> whatever <laughs> Peter Farley had on the Academy, let's find out. And, Seriously. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, Nicole, no pressure. Hopefully not something else to make me cry. That feels like a lot of pressure to follow up, but <laughs> I, because I went with like nice fun comedies in the first section, I'm going to go for films that like ripped me apart in this section. Oh God. The first of which, and this is, I'm about to put a, a, a writer out here for the second time as well. And that is Francis Ha. Yes. If there is oh anything Ugh. that I feel like has made me feel seen in my adulthood thus far and what it means to be a woman in your twenties, <laughs> it is Francis Ha. That movie took me apart and put me back together. I think about the whole like speech that she gives about, you know, seeing your person across the room at least twice a day, um, have drunkenly cried telling my best friend that she's that person for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even when I'm drunk, it's on my mind. It's that movie is like everything to me to the point that I can't watch it unless I like know I'm emotionally stable enough to handle it. And I just think that that screenplay is everything so good that movie came out when i was in my mid-20s and let me tell you i was like i feel seen i feel attacked <laughs> i feel personally attacked yeah, yeah. like, like I'm, get out I'm of my suing. head <laughs> yeah. fight or flight is on yes <laughs> i saw it i saw it like the week before i finished my first degree in college and i was like i'm going back i'm going back I'm yeah. not, I'm not- <laughs> Like, I'm not ready. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not an like, adult. Uh, <laughs> the way that that gets what it is that to be like a frustrated creative person in your 20s to like trying to have a career in the arts and it just like not happening slash paying shit. Yep. It's like and how it uh, feels it's to be like the, a single person as your yeah. friends are yes. not. Oh, I, God. Yeah. I literally like had bailed out of going to someone's wedding because I was like, I'm finishing college. And then I didn't actually do graduation because I was I went back to school. And then I saw this and I was like, I'm definitely not going to a wedding. <laughs> I'm not fucking stable. Like, what? Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, what a good screenplay. Oh my god, I hope Barbie's just as good. Can you imagine if like Barbie devastates us? Like <laughs> it, oh, I'm, it's I'm going ready to. for it. I'm ready. I'm for ready it. for it. It's <laughs> like Barbie is gonna be like from what I've read, it feels like an Ella Enchanted meets um not Ella Enchanted. Yes. Enchanted. No, enchanted. No, just enchanted. Yeah, just oh enchanted. God, yeah. It's not the so Emma many, one. so many enchanted films. Anyways, Enchanted and um, Life Size with Tyra Banks. Yes. Life Size size was the moment. What an (laughs) iconic film. But then Mm -hmm. I just keep thinking about like other things that Margot Robbie has produced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Promising Young Woman and things like that. And I'm like, this film is going to be everything. Mm -hmm. No problem. It's the thing, like Margot Robbie would not do this movie if it and was that's, the Barbie movie that people expected it to be. And that's yeah. the same thing with like Greta and Noah. I don't think they would do it either. Noah's yeah. not going to go from marriage story, basically about his life, to the Hitler professor, to <laughs> a Barbie movie. <laughs> like if it's not going to yeah. be something I just like, want to clarify worthy. for anyone listening that's like out of the loop. He does not mean that his movie about his life is that he's a Hitler oh, no. <laughs> There was a comma. In yeah. the commas are important. <laughs> Or no, Noah yeah. Bomback is gonna sue us. <laughs> Amy Schumer was attached to the Barbie movie first, and she's spoken about how there were a lot of creative differences, and what they wanted was not what she wanted. And seeing as the Good. kind of films that Amy Schumer tends to do compared to what we might be getting, I, I think it's there's nothing that could give end. me more faith in this movie than right? that right there. Yeah. <laughs> they can go do Leah Dunham's Polly Pocket movie. <laughs> Oh God! That's so funny because I was gonna say that Frances Ha for me was what everyone told me Girls was. Like, I there are parts yeah. of Girls that I like, yeah. but I just didn't really relate I mean, to Adam it. Driver is there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and, and it has that Driver's similar sort of like, and it has that kind of like cringe comedy aspect yeah. to it. Yeah. But like, I just like personally never was like devastated or felt like I was being attacked. Like there were moments, sure, like when her parents cut her off, which is like, but I'm not really an adult yet. Like, mm. but Francis Ha just like ruined my life in the best way possible. So Jacob, you're next. No. Uh, 
I think it's pretty obvious the pick I'm going to go with. Um, and I just, I got to go with eighth grade for everything you guys are saying about oh. um, Francis Hall. That's watching that. It brought me back to, um, or to middle school and just having those same kind of anxieties and fears. I remember I'm going to out myself right now. I remember being at like a party and going to the bathroom and sitting in like sitting in the bathroom sobbing like crying my mom going hey can you please come pick me up they're like Aww. watching the scary movie and i don't want to see this she goes. they were watching um they were watching the hills have eyes and i didn't want to see it and i didn't want to oh. be there anymore the remake or the original the remake oh either God. one like poor choice yeah like <laughs> but i was like sitting in there and i was like please and um uh, i was like begging i was like please like i was like no they're just watching a movie like everything's fine like i just want to go home so yeah, that's also same same reasoning as why I've never been to a haunted house. So that movie just like opened all that up to me and but not that great. Listen, it, eighth uh, grade is the best horror movie ever written. If you ask yeah. me, I'm still I'm not seriously. It's terrifying and hard to watch. I <laughs> it's so love hard it to watch. So much. It, it and, makes uh, me really scared. Like I won't lie to you guys. When <laughs> I first found out I was having a girl, I was like, oh yeah because so i like the pool scene was really like horrifying to me because it just like oh gave me ptsd it like, oh my God. Into things. i didn't know oh. we're still there yeah like, like it's stuff like, like vivid memories like i was like oh my god at laney yeah. harris's sixth grade birthday party <laughs> i was like what the f-? like lady <laughs> <like, "What?" laughs> like sorry if she's listening to this for some reason which i highly doubt but like your birthday party ruined my life um but <laughs> God. Yeah, I mean, I hold a lot of things against Bo Burnham, like stealing first feature at DGA from Bradley Cooper, but like, <laughs> you know, it's just like really funny that like, oh, guy wrote this. It's like, incredible, right? It, like, I, like how a you U- know uh, literally stuff? like a YouTuber, a YouTuber. I, it's just yeah. like wild. It's insane. It's, and can we talk about of- how like? It could, it would have won the Oscar if it, if it had gotten nominated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it won everything. It's really crazy. And fucking like A24 those... couldn't get it nominated. What the fuck? It's because, like, yeah, they... close to Moonlight, they were like, we don't need to do anything. Like, we're the studio that brought you like, Moonlight. I'm like, you're half yeah. of it. Like, you're one. They pushed the Paul Schrader movie instead. Yeah, that's what they did. Okay, well, that deserved. And that was another movie I thought about when I got pregnant. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> shit. Shit. <laughs> That movie, eighth grade, like my my friend Tim, who writes uh, for Alternate Ending, he he calls eighth grade the ultimate experience in grueling terror, and like like it's a horror movie, and like yes. yeah yes. yeah like there I remember that when Pulp Fiction came out, there were all these reports um, about people like passing out and fainting and like needing to have like EMTs brought in during the hypodermic needle to the chest scene. Every other scene in eighth grade. I know was like someone. That. I was just I know like, someone who I walked out watch. of eighth grade because it was too scary. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I it was so hard to watch, and it's just about like, this universal grade. experience we've <laughs> all been mm-hmm. in this position, and yet it's so awful. I oh. also want to say that the worst person I've ever known, and I'm not going to name names, but did tell me that she didn't find eighth grade relatable and that really should have been my sign like yeah. that should have been the red flag that did it yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i think about the fire just the fire scene in general the whole, oh, that whole conversation with their dad i think about that all the time same fears same situations all of that i just uh i don't know I, that's that's one like josie was saying that's one that like whenever i want to be like inspired i just will read through that because i have it actually next to me Love that. So Dan is next. Okay. I, uh, all right. I'll just, I hate this. I hate this so much because I have three. It's really, really hard. Okay. Okay. So the first, okay. The first one, I'm going with like genuinely like original concept insane execution um one of my favorite movies run lola run 
Ooh. Which, if you have not seen Run Lola Run, I think it's on something. Um, German movie Tom Tickwer, who uh, co-directed Cloud Atlas with the Wachowskis, um, it was his like big, splashy. I think it was his debut film, and it follows um, a woman named Lola who she has to run. She has to get. Um, a large amount of money for her boyfriend who's in trouble with like some gangsters or something and she has like 30 minutes to get him this money and she runs to try to get him the money and then when that doesn't work the movie like it rewinds and she goes back to the beginning and makes another decision and goes in a different direction and it is like one of the earliest movies that I can think of to do that sort of like split yeah. lives like not quite multiverse but like that sort of thing and like there are people where like she meets them or interacts with them in a certain way and we get like as she passes them we see like in flashes what happens to them and how their life has become different because of how she interacted with them and it is so amazing like the forward momentum of this thing is great but then it also has times where it does like quiet down and get a little more like european art house philosophical but it's still like really good oh it's so good i love it so much and everything that is great about it can be found in the screenplay i rented this movie from blockbuster because of her pink hair Yes, the red, red? Is it red? red hair. Okay, so yeah. I remember being at Blockbuster and that was the only reason I rented it. I like, <laughs> yes! Because I was like really young. I was like, <laughs> I was probably like in fourth grade or third grade. And I remember like, because I was really close with my Blockbuster clerk, Andrew. Um, and he was like, this is a good one. And I was like, I'm so cool that I impressed <laughs> the Blockbuster clerk. But I had no idea it wasn't in English. And then I was like watching it. And I was no. like, what? Because <laughs> I was like a child. <laughs> but, but I still really liked it. I remember watching it like years later because I kept it. But <laughs> besides the point, I did not steal from Blockbuster. It's fine. Um, no one's going to be surprised with my first pick. But I do want to clarify that I made a joke. It was adapted. It is not. It is original. Oh my god. No, it's not. It's adapted. It's the most what? popular it's book not, in the world. It, okay, I was screamed at that it is not adapted. <laughs> I'm going with Mother by Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> ah, yes! <laughs> Listen, yes, he adapted a full book into a movie, but that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Um, it is so original and it is so bizarre. And he's trying to say so many things at the same time, <laughs> but it works for me. It really works. And um, the screenplay is structured very strangely, but that's why I like it. I, I would pay anything to have been a fly on his wall when he was in his underwear watch writing this in the <laughs> kitchen. I don't understand what he was doing, but I love the results so much. But I literally texted everyone to be like, is it adapted? And everyone yelled at me for even bringing up the question. <laughs> so that's my pick. Nobody ever has anything to say about mother, but me, the only person <laughs> that repeatedly saw in fears. It's fine. Um, so Josie, you're next. Richard of a Lady on Fire, what can I say? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yay! France, what did That's you, you do? But also, uh, I know Neon had to push Parasite. And I mean, look at what we got. Look at what we got. But Portrait, <laughs> it deserved a winning chance. That movie deserved so much more. It deserves about, everything. Can we talk about when you saw it in theaters and you were like, what a nice movie. And then it gets towards the end and you're just like gutted, like literally oh. sobbing like no. i i didn't know anything about it other than because it played at a festival that i was going to and i was like cool and then i sat down and all i knew was it was gay i'm like i know it's gay and i know it's yeah. french I and i know it's period period there's gowns there's gowns, uh, yeah. there's gowns. There's gowns. There's gowns. It's french so it started and i was like I needed to recalibrate my brain for one second and then I was good. I'm like, okay, wee oui, wee. Oui. 
and then <laughs> I was fully in and clearly I love it it's my personality it then then by the end I was like huh this is nice oh never mind I am sobbing openly A mess. and the two people next to me are like okay <laughs> and I'm like how oh. do you not feel the way I do right now I also the thing about that screenplay too is that I'm fascinated by the way that the language used in the dialogue is so simple Mm -hmm. yet so poetic at the same time like I took French through like school and college and like I speak French questionably and I can understand most of what is being said in it like without translations that was me when speaking Italian (laughs) Like, yeah, yes. and it's like it's amazing that they're using such like fairly simple language. Yeah, but it's put together in this beautiful, beautiful way. Like it's just, and I really hope that like French classes, uh, like upper level French classes, start using this as their movie that they watch like four thousand times because some of the stuff I was subjected to in French classes, <laughs> like we need to get new material, folks. Yeah, um, yeah. please, French teachers, show. You're this like, to if your I'm kids. watching the same movie at the beginning of my French classes and then like the very ending of my French classes, like no. Or or it was like every class would have like one movie and you just watch that one movie over and over. Yeah. And, like any day the teacher didn't feel like teaching. And some of the ones I watched were like weird and like definitely not things that they probably should have been showing high schoolers. Um, so this actually feels more appropriate That's than what I, they did choose. So I, I think, you know, if there's any French teachers watching, please use this in your classroom. Please. And talk about a movie that just gets better and better on rewatches too. Yes. Um, like the first time I saw it, I, I liked it, but the big, beginning like the first half is like really slow Mm -hmm. and I had difficulty getting into it but the second time I watched it I was just like I was so drawn into how beautiful like Nicole said how beautiful and simple the language was and the cinematography but like the story is I am obsessed with how they create their own little matriarchal society (laughs) basically in this house I it's it just on so me. Good. I feel like it would be a very good rewatch right now um, because it is topical mm-hmm. considering things that have yes. been going on recently. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, so you know how the ending is just like devastating and I was yeah. so worried oh on a rewatch it wouldn't be as devastating. Not that I want to like no, have a is. full breakdown, but <laughs> like the second time I watched it, it was at a and a with literally both actresses and um I like I hate you so much Kenzie I bought tickets (laughs) at the very 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 last minute so it was like in the front row and I actively sobbed which I did not prepare for because I was like I've already seen this it's not gonna have that much emotional weight again but it definitely does and that's like such props to the screenplay because it's just written so carefully but at the same time so gut-wrenching and then their performances on top of it and I never want to go to anything in public ever again wait can we talk about how Celine Siamo wrote this for Adele Hainel who was her former lover like that's why yeah. that's why uh, yeah. <laughs> like I I would watch a movie about that like, yes <laughs> not right? making stuff about the making of the godfather make something about the making of <laughs> yes. the lady on fire yes <laughs> that is what yes. we want yeah. I mean keep making the stuff about the Godfather, if it's the Oscar Isaac J. Gyllenhaal one, but like, also make yep. this, also, also just like, and my Titanic show. It is the best screenplay about like everything that this movie is about. <laughs> like, it is the best movie about painting. It is the best movie about lesbian love. It is the best period romance. Like, it just aces everything and every level of theme. I, yeah, brilliant choice, Josie. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Nicole, you are next. Okay. Continuing me and Josie's theme of films that will destroy you. Yes. Please. Emotional damage. I So, so this, this is not a recommended marathon if anyone's yeah. looking at Josie <laughs> and Nicole's choices. Not recommended. Unless you're looking to mess yourself yeah. up. Because um, listen, I've been there. I've been there before. <laughs> I had and this is funny because as soon as I like sat down to do this I was like oh I knew what my two films are and like I've got some honorable mentions that I'll, I'll talk about later but this is one of my favorite movies of all time 
I'm fascinated by this screenplay and I feel like every time I watch it, I get new things out of it. I think it's one that you have to actually sort of put a little bit of work into reckoning with, which I actually think is to its credit. And it is Inside Lewin Davis, which I just think is such a fascinating screenplay. And I also think it's like one of the best movies I've ever seen. Again, similar to Frances Ha, about what it means to be a creative and particularly what it means to be a creative and fail. And I think that that's such an interesting thing for a screenwriter to be reckoning with that I just find like even more great stuff in this screenplay every time I watch it. And there's also just lines in here that are incredible. Like every scene between Oscar Isaac and Carrie Mulligan, the dialogue in those is insane. It's good. It's everything. I, this is one of my favorite Con Brothers movies. Um, Mm -hmm. I just find it so devastating. And, but like, okay, it's a grueling watch for me personally, but sometimes like my husband thinks it's like fine. He's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's not hard to watch. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like sobbing. (laughs) My my parents watched it finally recently. And my mom afterwards texts me, why do you only recommend depressing movies to me? I was like, I'm sorry, I warned you. It was also my first Criterion collection that I bought myself. So it's very special in my heart. Um, I also just realized of me and Josie's picks, I own three out of the four on Criterion. So if they want to put Come On, Come On into it, then, you know. Nice. Uh, wait, should. I own all of those on Criterion also. Yeah, put Come On, Come On. Do Come, come On, Come On, come on, on Come On. Yeah. Um, come on. Wow. Yeah. The, thing, the thing that I love <laughs> about Lewin Davis is that, like, you don't think it's going to be, you don't think that it begins with the end. And the way that it mm-hmm. does that, like, the way you think, like, this is just, like, a loop Like he's just going through this same shit over and over and it does that so well and so artfully. Mm -hmm. And the way that I assume that if this has to be in the screenplay, but like the songs that they chose, because those are all like folk standards, most of them. And those songs are so perfectly suited to every moment. I also think- And how it teases out the backstory so well across the whole thing. It, I, like when we get to that dinner party scene and he reacts so strongly to her singing along with him, I lose it. I also just think it's so interesting how they manage to continue to unveil like layers of this character over the course of the entire film. And also I think it's such an interesting exercise in sort of how to create a character who is on the surface level for most of the film, absolutely unlikable and yet still ensure that the audience is like with him every step of the way and never loses interest in him without him being like comically bad. I just, it's it's walking a very fine line there. And I think it's so impressive that it manages to do it correctly. Um, I feel like I should watch this tonight now. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen it. I haven't seen it in so long. I'm trying to think of the last time I watched it. I don't know. But that is so funny that you brought up the Criterion because that would be a great little four pack of like, you want to you wanna almost kill yourself? You, you want to hurt yourself? yourself? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. We can so, add eighth grade to that too. Literally <laughs> movies about creative people, I feel like it could be. It's literally its own like sub genre. Like, yep. that's amazing. It's my favorite subject. <laughs> it's literally, clearly. Oh my God. Jacob, are you going to go with something else depressing? Like, can uh, you this? I no? have a lot of, no, I have a lot of audible mentions that I'll talk about later. But the one I'm going with isn't, it's not quite as depressing. I think it's just really cool in what was able to. Um, what he was able to do. And I think it's probably one of the inspirations for Magnolia. And I'm going to go with Nashville from Robert Altman. Oh, you know. the best. The my, best. One of my favorite original song winners ever. Mm-hmm. And just the fact he, there are 24 main characters and an hour's worth of musical numbers in that movie alone. Um, And I think it's one of my favorite moments in any movie probably ever is when um, he's singing, uh, Keith Carradine singing, like, I'm not easy. And there's like 
five different girls in the audience that all think he's singing to them. And you understand why they all think he's singing to them. Like, as well as like this whole bigger movie, like overall and uh, just. And then when they all realize that he's not actually singing to them. Yes, exactly. so good. Oh, Uh, it's yeah. Speaking of criterion, that's what I've got, but it's hard, hard to watch because it's like over three hours long, but But it's so fucking good. Yeah. Oh, so good yeah. it's it's one of my favorites in along with magnolia in the kind of like you guys are all coincidentally in the same place and even if you're not affecting this person yeah. your actions could still yeah it's i think it's just so just so perfect and so well done jacob's been talking about nashville my entire friendship with him I love it, it so much. As he should. It as is a he should. great, it is one of the great American movies. It is. You know what's so mm-hmm. funny? If you asked me with Jacob to pick four movies that define him, I like not define him, but like represent him, I would say The Truman Show, Magnolia, Eighth Grade, and Nashville. <laughs> and those are your four picks. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Oh my God. Obsessed. Okay, Dan, you're next. I hate this. Yeah. Um, I I hate leaving off the one that I'm not picking, but I feel like um, Jacob already picked like the modern equivalent of my third one, the one that I'm not picking, um, which is The Breakfast Club. Um, that movie which, like, defi- that movie was um, responsible for my go-to password for like 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously, for security I love reasons, it. will not say, but one of my passwords, no. you know, like your go-to, like, fuck, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Came from that movie. It's at the template. It was like, it's the high school movie. It's the but, girl. It's mm-hmm. that girl. Yeah. But Jacob picked eighth grade, so we we got that covered. Um, so instead it leaves me up to just pick like my most recent instant watch classic. I'm obsessed with this movie should have been nominated for the Oscar nine days. Nice. A truly (laughs) original concept, stunning execution. And just like, I grew so attached to all of these characters and the plot and just watched it every time I watch it I cry mm-hmm. <laughs> the way I multiple times no, that's the thing the way I don't know what year to put for this movie <laughs> <laughs> technically it was released in 2021 even right? though it was a 2020... it played all the festivals in 2020. <laughs> it was released yeah. in 2020 and it was dropped in 2021. That, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's amazing. Ugh, if we're talking Oscar year, it was 2021. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. This COVID. Yeah. This, this girl COVID. Um, Miss Rona, she is a bitch. Yeah. We hate her. <laughs> Um, we do. We hate her a lot. How dare she fuck up our friend Nicole the way she did? How True. dare she? But yeah, okay. nine days. I, if you have not seen nine days, you can nine. finally rent it. If you have not seen yes. it, you can finally rent it because that's how I finally saw it. I've been avoiding it because I know it's going to destroy me. It's so Literally. good, Josie. Once, I remember it's so good. It was playing at a festival that I had access to online and I remember I started watching it and immediately I was like, nope, and closed. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready. I'm still not ready, but each day I get closer. Each day I'm like, hmm, is today, I'm, is today the day I'm going to see nine days? One of the days. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally one of those where like people had seen it and said, and they're like, yeah, it's really good. So I saw it at the, the as part of the Hamptons Film Festival that we were like kind of covering from New York and I, pushed play and proceeded to be like just and not it didn't like destroy me I was crying because I felt so much empathy and it's so beautiful like it was a good cry but like literally the entire second half of this movie just in tears amazing I I love a movie like when I finished it I felt like like good like I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like like I feel like it did something 
to my soul. Yes. And I don't think you can say that about that many movies. No. And like, I think we all want to, but I don't think that many, like I mean it about that many movies. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, no, it is one of those things where I, I saw it and I'm like, this is absolutely everything that I would want out of movies. Yeah. You know, like, like it's a genuinely, like I had no idea where the story was going because I've never seen a story like this ever. And it, cl- the characters are so fully drawn on the page and then the actors bring another dimension to it and just the story and i how we get to know these people and the issues that it's grappling with with you know, like it is that big question of like how what is the best way to live your life and it, it really gets at that like do you live as like a I really respond to this like do you live as a cynical cold-hearted bastard (laughs) or do you live with optimism and positivity and being open to everything and like that I feel that (laughs) duality on like a daily basis just the way you're describing it it reminds me of the way everything everywhere all at once made me feel I was it was I have it was it was that movie and nothing else made me feel like completely renewed and refreshed about life until everything everywhere all at once yeah love that almost made me change my pick that is my next Ooh. and but i'm not gonna pick it i'm gonna save it for an honorable mention i am really annoyed though that this movie also came out the same year as my other pink mother but i'm gonna go with <laughs> no one knows what i'm gonna say i'm gonna go with a movie that destroyed me in a bad way because it made me like just miserable and so depressed. Um, a ghost story. Oh, I, my God. Oh. Listen, keep <sighs> telling me to watch it, and I'm like, Oh my God! It, you need to I be emotionally. To yeah, you need to be emotionally. I don't, the like, first half of that movie. Will I is... ever be stable enough? <laughs> no, no. I I've never the seen first a movie half just. Tough. It's it's so brutal and like just the dealing of grief and then knowing also that that's the first time Rooney Mara's ever had pie. I don't know. Um, <laughs> fun fact. Like, who are you? Who, who are, are you? you? How is this the first time? You haven't pie? No. But oh, I only had pie for the first time last year. How? For me, it was 2017. Wow. How? Is this a common thing? Wait, no, but I-, I just said never. I never had it. Oh, what pie did you have? How have you not had some kind of pie at Thanksgiving? Like, um, I think it was. I don't go. I think it was apple pie. I well, yeah, true. Um, I don't go to my Thanksgiving usually, but I think it was like apple pie, maybe. Yeah, you don't even know. I I don't remember. I remember the only reason I tried it. The only reason I tried it was because I was like, oh, I'm 23 and I've never tried pie before. Your that children me. are Have you like never had me. like chocolate pie? No. Con pie. Mississippi sorry, mud pie. Like I, like. I had, um, I had like, it was like an or- it was like Oreo. No, I had Oreo and it was like whipped cream and they put Oreos on top no. of it. If that no, counts, no, 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 no. Uh, no. That doesn't count. No, if not, no. I've had Hershey pies before. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, never had I, Like a nice am, key lime pie. No, nope, I don't so, even know what a key lime is. I'm so confused. <laughs> fruit, Jacob. <laughs> but like, is it one fruit or is it two? <laughs> key lime. I'm I'm key lime is a like smaller. And sweeter like type lime. of lime. This means yeah. this oh, means so if like I ask Jacob, cutie. kind of like, okay. essentially, okay. Yes. It, that is the relationship to the lime. Yeah. <laughs> if I asked Jacob to go buy me Lacroix, he'd be like key lime or lime, and I'd be like <laughs> lime. He'd be like which one? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, a ghost story, devastating. Like wow. I think I, I it's one of my favorite movies about grief. I just think it describes it in the way that it truly affects people and Rooney Mara is so good in this movie and I know she's like kind of not the focus but you know I just I love this movie and 
David Lowry's filmography is the strangest thing that I've I ever seen it. unfold, but I love, I it, love so it so much. I can't wait for Pan and Wendy. I, yes. What is he doing? Like, what is he doing? I don't know. I will I be know. seated. He said I will it was be his seated. Favorite. He said yeah. it was his favorite film that he's done during a QA about the Green Knight. And I'm like, sir, I just saw the Green Knight. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, he also said he based it off the lighthouse. So I'm yeah. like, what is going <laughs> <Yes>. on? <laughs> Oh, I love, I, you love a guy who can do the smallest of small indies and then go do um, Pete's Dragon and do like just back to back. I just, I love it so much. Um, I wish more people would jump at doing big blockbuster movies only to fund their smaller projects. Um, Like Robert Pattinson. (laughs) yeah we love a king we love a king oh my god him and a david lowry movie oh my god but yeah i love love a ghost story the uh i'm not gonna spoil it but the scene where like time starts to go and i'm just Uh, like can't breathe cannot breathe and that's the thing like i really didn't like the first half of a ghost Mm -hmm. story I thought it was way too slow and way too meandering. And like, really, I just don't want to spend time watching Rooney Mara eat a whole pie. I just don't. Um, but the second half is really magical. Yeah. It's, it's, and I, I think it's, per- I, I think it's perfect because it's one of those things where like the first half is so slow and then the second half is so fast and it just works on a life scale and, Oh, what a great pick. What a great pick. I almost went with something um, that I would say is my biggest honorable mention, which is um, Melancholia. So Dan talking about like living your life as a cynic or as an optimist. Um, Yeah, Melancholia devastated me and just changed like I don't know. It's one of those movies that like as someone who is more like I'm mostly a cynic. I'm trying not to be because I have a child now and I feel like that's bad behavior. But like Melancholia, like I primarily identify as Kirsten Dunn's character. Um, but I thought movies just devastating and talk about a movie with like completely different halves and like, like the wedding versus the planet. And I just that that movie will fuck me up forever and I didn't pick it because I picked Kirsten Dunst in the actress episode so I was like maybe back off this movie like maybe a little bit it's been over 10 years just like back up but also think that like me picking Oscar Isaac for Inside Bloom and Davis and the actor stop me from picking it here oh I've done that with both ones I did it with Brad Pitt, Moneyball, That's and true, Jim Carrey, and Truman Show. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is I fucked up. <laughs> Although, like, let I me tell you. I did already add, I've never seen Melancholia, and I did add it to my physical list of movies that I keep. It's I on Hulu, next, I so. think. It I think is. it's on Hulu. Yeah. I'm going to watch it, it soon. It's a difficult watch, but it's really good. And mm-hmm. also, like, if you want a really good 2011 double feature, which Nicole now needs to do because she hasn't seen either of these movies, Melancholia and Bridesmaids. All right, that is a killer double feature about depression. (laughs) Okay. In very, very different ways. I will do that. Dan, we'll do a double feature over Skype. It'll be fun. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I want to come. What the fuck? Dan and I love to have a Skype movie night. Can see your invite. (laughs) Thank you. Um, also want to shout out Seven Psychopaths. I love that movie with my whole body. And then my depressing Blue Valentine. Was that nominated? It wasn't nominated, right? No, no. I don't think so. I think it was just, um, it was just Michelle. Michelle. Yes. Um, talk about, uh, Ruin Your Life movie. Yes. (laughs) Changed my life Uh, in the worst way possible. uh And then just pour two out for Phantom Thread and The Master. (laughs) If I wasn't a threadhead, um, I'd be, I don't know. I, I would have, what would the master fan base be called? Oh my God. What is, what is their little cult called? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it in years. Um, but if I wasn't a threadhead, I'd be in that cult. Um, I, some of my honorable mentions, we're done, right? Everyone went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of my honorable mentions, uh, 
Groundhog Day just for setting a precedent for how yes those movies go from now nice. on. Um, Singing in the Rain. From now on. <laughs> One of my <laughs> nice. favorite. Sing I think the it's the best, best movie ever made. Yep. I think it's the best musical, one of the best movies ever made. Um, one of my favorite rom coms, and I just rewatched it the other day, 500 Days of Summer. Um, yeah. I love, love, never seen love it. that movie. Oh my God. Nicole, it will become your personality for a <sighs> yes. year. Yes. I really hate, will. I hate it. <laughs> like the only person that doesn't like that movie because I feel like I'm the only person alive that doesn't like it. Oh, I love okay, it. it is, you could be I the person who hasn't seen it. So. I, I feel like that's I love, better. I, like I feel like it's better to not to like have not seen it because I saw it late and the only reason I saw it is because you know the bench that they always sit at or whatever? Mm. Uh, yeah. So it was below one of the apartment buildings I lived in and like no people, way. Like, people would just go and sit there and I'd be like what the <laughs> fuck like I just want to live my life <laughs> and there'd be like a line to take pictures and I'm like no it's annoying because that movie is really good but those characters are so frustrating yeah. 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 I, I love a movie about unlikable people like it's my favorite trope is like movies where you hate the main character but like I don't know I just I think it's all right I, I guess I should say that I just don't love it you know I'm I mean? not gonna lie. There was a little while that I made like not having seen it into like a quirky girl trait <laughs> because then like I went to a school that had a lot of film majors, and then like at parties people would it would come up and people would then feel the need to explain it to me, and I'd be like, mm-hmm, yeah. And it was better when they did that than like Tarantino movies, so I went with it. <laughs> I love that. Um, and then I've just got a couple more mass from last year. Just that devastating. Was on my list too. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Um, and then I'm going to get groans from this. And it's a movie that technically hasn't even come out yet. But how you guys felt about Francis Ha is how I feel about Cha Cha Real Smooth. You and can't I, say it yet. It, you <laughs> don't know that it won't get nominated, Jacob. Who, who someone did this last week. I swear they did. <laughs> And they okay, said I did, but it's a movie I knew was going to get nominated because because it was ruled Emmy eligible, so it's not Oscar eligible. Oh, yeah. So take that. <laughs> ah, ah, okay, ah. watch Cha Cha Real Smooth in June. Um, but yeah, I love need it. every to how you guys feel about Francis Hall. That's how I feel about that one. That is it makes sense. Movies. I want to shout out uh, two of the greatest horror movies ever made that deserve to be nominated here: Alien. Mm-hmm. and halloween mm-hmm. nice nice halloween hey that's uh the guy who made that he's from here what Carpenter. I yep have a few that i want to shout out obviously mass was top of my list because yeah. that is a brilliant 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 screenplay i also have to shout out the farewell what a great okay. heart-wrenching Yes. Mm-hmm. But God, I make it sound like I only like depressing movies. Um, you like, will also, I smile? I'm not watching your movie if it makes me smile. Also, <laughs> blind spotting. What a film. What, what a, a film. film. What, what a, a film. screenplay. Oh. Oh, I, I love that, that duo. I want to see them make like 40,000 more movies. Yes. I don't go watch anything from them. Yes. I also, because I'm me, have to shout out Crimson Peak which I also think is the funniest thing ever to be an original screenplay. To me, it feels like it should be adapted from something. Okay, like, I remember Googling it. I'm like, is it not I a Victorian it? novel? Yeah. Like, I literally was like, this is a novel that he just I'm gave like, horror aspects. Surely to. this was written by like Wilkie Collins, right? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, which also like, I watched that movie this week. I watched that movie like every three weeks because I'm obsessed with it. And there are some lines in it that are just really, really nice. And then the the one movie I am going to mention to prove that I can like, <laughs> although now that I say that, it's a happy movie, but I also cry my eyes out at it. So apparently I can't like movies that don't make me cry, but because it is like my favorite movie to do with time travel. And I think the way that it utilizes the concept is really cool. Um, I have to shout out about time. Yeah, I think that's yeah. so cool. Oh conceptually. my God. And it's got so many good like lines in it every single thing that bill Nye says in it. Yeah. i cannot believe you just called that a happy movie <laughs> okay no because it is a happy movie for the first like two-thirds of it 
<laughs> that Kenzie, movie, I saw compared it. Compared to my other choices. <laughs> okay, true. But I saw that to anyone listening or just has been to LA, I saw that at the Grove at like 10 a.m. being like, whatever. I like Rachel McAdams. And I just like oh, God. ruined I my life. For the first time, um, not this like February, but last year on Valentine's Day by Why? myself. Why? Ah, so like, I'm already sad. No. I make myself sadder because Wait, I, been, like, I, this movie will destroy you. And I was I, like, let's go for it. And I it love didn't. doing that though. No. Like being it, like, I'm sad. I'm going to watch something. Me, it's my favorite thing. Horrifying. Yep. Anytime like, I'm sad, I'm like, what's the most depressing movie I can find? What was <laughs> I just, what was I just watching that he was like, when you're sad? Oh no, it's the On the Count of Three trailer where he's like, why would I want to listen to yeah. this? When I, I'm like, shut up. That's what I do. I like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I'm going through a breakup. Of course I'm going to listen to Alanis Morissette. What the fuck is this point you're making? <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, Josie, do you have any to shout out? Yes, um, they're very chaotic. I love that. Um, of course. We love chaotic. Of course, though. You mentioned the farewell, and I'm going to back you up because, yes, that's yes. a really good screenplay. Um, Jennifer's body. Yes. 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 The- yes. Kinsey screams. I have a Jennifer's body shirt I almost wore today, but I was like, no, that's not a very mom like shirt. Oh my God love oh jennifer's body josie before you got on kenzie was talking about how she prioritized seeing jennifer's body for like the 30th time over avatar <laughs> the guy literally yelled at us um but yeah what a screenplay i quote it every day i say the li- like lime green jello oh non-stop if someone yeah. tells me they're jealous i'm like you're lime green jello <laughs> Um, Uptown Girls because I love that movie and it makes me feel the same God. way that Come On Come On does and I can't believe it has like what 10% on Rotten Tomatoes and I'm like y'all hate people <laughs> <laughs> no do they just hate women yeah. um, Barb and Star go to so Visa Lamar oh! <laughs> yeah because if we're gonna talk about comedies like I could give an entire PowerPoint presentation to like a two hour class for like film majors on why this is how you write comedy but like mm-hmm. does everything correctly while still like it just follows all the rules but it also kind of breaks them but it doesn't it's just the way it deserves uh, to be a three no four 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 oscar nominations yeah four <laughs> it was so good for anyone listening it's up to you uh, to guess which yeah four. it's hilarious it deserves love and um this doesn't count but um, I know what I'm saying, and I'm gonna say it. Um, flea bag. <laughs> I don't care. If ah! it's a show. I don't care if it's a show. Put them. Put both seasons together. Do a Phoebe Waller Bridge. So, everything. Nice. Yeah. Let's talk about how I watched season two of Fleabag before season one, not knowing <laughs> that it was season two. And I just thought it started at the dinner scene. And I watched all no. of season two and cut through it. Because it was right when season two was coming out. And so it was like so the first confused. thing that popped up. Oh. That's so I watched all I of season really two quickly... and then had to go back and put it together. This is when I have to do my little plug for if you've not seen it, highly recommend Crashing on Netflix. Yes. It's Phoebe Waller Bridge's like previous series. It has Johnny Daly show. from Bridgerton in it. Highly recommend it if you've loved Fleabag and haven't seen it. Yes. It's also, also very I, short. I just realized that I forgot a movie that really should have been one of my pain. What is that? Is I feel Dan? so bad. Um I I I don't think anyone has seen this movie, but it's this little um Australian like avatar. No, it's this literally this Australian stop motion animated movie called Marion Max, mm-hmm. which it, if you want to be emotionally devastated, <laughs> watch it. Wait, okay, beautiful. Wait, it this is popped up for oh, me on AMC Plus. Yeah, it is so good. It is about a li- very young Australian girl named Mary and a an obese American man who has Asperger's named Max and they end up being pen pals like accidentally and it the um uh, the guy the who word wrote of that it took another twist for me <laughs> yeah the, the guy who wrote it Adam Elliott it's literally based on his like own correspondence with a pen pal in America for years it is so sad and so beautiful 
And I, I, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend, because that is one that not a lot of people have seen, and it's great. I love that. I love um, this type of animation so much. And you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, I'm in, I'm in. So good. All right, guys. Uh, is that ever it for everyone's honorable mentions? Mm -hmm. um, Jacob's probably like, I've last got 17 one. more. <laughs> this is my favorite category. Um, Ghostbusters is one of my favorite kid, uh, movies as a kid. And I love the, I just love everything they did. It's what got me in love with now, maybe a problematic person, but um, Bill Murray. And I just, it was what it was, it, that might also be another reason why I didn't watch scary movies for a while was because of the beginning. Mm. But I just had to shout out that one. We had very different childhoods, like very different. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, like Jacob wasn't eating pie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Clearly. I was eating pie. That watching... is where everything started to go wrong for him. Yeah. I was like eating pie, watching The Exorcist, giving out the ring tape at my birthday party. Like, I it don't know back. what was going Yeah. <laughs> I No, literally, we sent home everyone with those tapes and you know i love it i i think they i think jacob and i were just like different wavelengths of mm -hmm. childhood um we'll see how daisy turns out my child we'll <laughs> see um we'll see we'll see what kind of birthday parties she has all right guys um josie tell everyone where they can find you yes you can find me at the josie marie on twitter and letterbox amazing nicole you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at Nicole Ackman 16. And your podcast? I'm the way that I just was like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> the podcast, I, I well, I'm doing too much podcasting these days. Uh, you can find both me and Dan now on the new and improved Awards Watch podcast. We this morning um, did a new episode in which we did a lot of things, but also talked about. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and I shared my hot takes. They're not that hot, really, but Very I important. also will say uh, I'm about to launch a new podcast, so definitely check that out. It's going to be one of the most chaotic things you've ever heard because it is me and Jacob and our friend Lex talking about prepping for Greta Gerwig's Barbie. So everyone get excited. And it has beautiful art made by Kenzie. Oh, yes. cute. I didn't know that. That's amazing. I'm so excited. <laughs> Nobody told me that, Jacob. Thanks. I thought I told you we, we <laughs> No, I said this oh. to you and you didn't even answer me. You didn't we even love it. Thank yeah. you. It's beautiful. You didn't say anything. Wow. Well, I'm saying so. thank you now because I assume you said thank you, Jacob. I, I was like, I'm, I was, I'm really part. into Barbie. It was supposed to be a surprise. Okay, well, I just sent okay, everything sure. to put it up. So, surprise. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, on to someone who communicates with me. Dan, where can everybody find you and listen to you at? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Dance and Dan on Film. You can listen to me at <sighs> the new and approved Awards Watch podcast and also on the Next Best Picture podcast, also with Nicole, which yeah, I feel like I keep, also need I'm to make everywhere. clear, like, we are not a package deal. We do not do everything <laughs> Book us separately. It just looks <laughs> that way. But they'll that's be back what, next Dan, week. Dan, that's what you think. <laughs> Well, it was what I thought until I was not asked to be on this Barbie podcast. So, you know. Damn, we already have you booked for an episode. Don't even act like that. I'm like, what Barbie podcast? I still um, haven't been asked on Pinsy, Pinsy you're booked for an episode too. I'm booked. <laughs> All right, Jacob. Josie, we need to get everyone... you on an episode. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jacob, where can everyone find you? Um, if you haven't heard, I started a Barbie podcast with two people that <laughs> were screaming, we want to be on your massively popular uh, show. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also find me on Twitter at tberry57. And since Nicole didn't do it, I'll do it. I have a link tree up there and you can find all the stuff. <laughs> As the link trying to get that link tree sponsored, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> That's amazing. I don't have a link tree, but I'm at Ken's Vanunu on everything. And then follow Oscars underscore central on Instagram and Twitter. These will go up as polls and you can choose your favorite original screenplay that does not have an Oscar. So next week, we will be going back to an acting category. So please listen next week also. Thanks guys.